Welcome to the political segment of the weekend show. Joining us right now are Comrade Bishop Emmanuel Amakiri, who is the chairman of the Young Progressive Party. We have Reverend Sally Chinebu, who is a member of the All Progressive Congress. We've had her on the program twice now. Um, and most uh, distinguished Senator Zainab Kure, who is the DG of the De David Mark presidential campaign. Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Our program today is uh, the internal democracy within political parties. Uh, we have a representation of three political parties in today's program. You have the YPP, you have the APC, and you have the PDP. Um, can you tell us what the internal democracy in your party is, given the fact that your candidate, uh, aspirant, I should say, Senator David Mark, is vying for the position of president, and he's not one of the two, three top names that we've heard so far. So do you believe that his emergence is visible given the state of the democracy in the People's Democratic Party? Well, thank you so very much for the opportunity you're giving me to talk about this all important um, topic. Um, it is because there is internal democracy in PDP that he has so emerged at the time that he's emerging. The fact that he didn't come at the very beginning does not mean something would have propped his coming up other than uh, deepening of democracy. So the top three you're talking about, or the top four uh, for him not uh, uh, being within that class, uh, possibly I believe you're talking about uh, uh, the times of their emergence, not as regards to popularity. You believe that given the current state of the PDP structure right now, Senator mm. David Mack can emerge the presidential candidate in the People's Democratic Party? Certainly, certainly. Okay, Reverend Sally, um, mm. <laughs> the All Progressive Congress, um, they've decided to opt in for direct primaries for the presidential um, uh, candidacy. Um, do you believe that this, and I, I believe that President Mohamed Buhari is going to go on op unopposed, if sure, I'm correct. Certainly so what is. does that say about the democracy in your party? I beg your pardon? What does that say about the democracy in your party? It's purely, it's purely it's the same. I mean, it's the best. Because it's a unanimous decision. And because we believe that it's the best candidate, we believe that that is a proper internal democracy in APC. When the family have come together, and say this is what they want. Nobody can change it. There was a gentleman who wanted to run for president, but he was edged out due to the sale, due to the high price of the nomination form. I disagree with you. I don't think it was the high, high price of the, uh, the form. But that's what he said. But that's what he said, but that is not the issue. What you said is different from what is on the ground. What is on the paper is different from what you said with your mouth. Nobody stopped him. It, after all, it's not only totally APC. Uh, the living governorship is 22 million naira. Uh, some other persons have agreed to pay for their forms at 22. Some said, no, they don't have the money. Or some said, I don't want to go and struggle when I know I cannot get it. I think the, same, the issue is very direct and simple. He knows that the majority, 99.9999%, maybe he's the only single person, are in support of Muhammad Ibrahim. Because we believe that he's the best candidate How did for you Nigeria. come to that conclusion? That's what we're saying. How did you come to that conclusion that 99.9% of members of 100%. Yes, 100%. Let, let me put it, put it God clear. Where's your evidence? What are the statistics? You want me to give you the evidence? You ask me, I will come with evidence and I'll give it to you. Eh? The, the issue is that it's very, very simple. The Nigerians and APC in totality believe in the leadership quality of Muhammad Buhari. And there is no need fighting war that is not there. You don't have to establish what does not exist. What exists in APC is that Muhammad Buhari is our best choice, is the best candidate, and for us so far, thus far, he's done well. For us, he needs, the second term is very, very necessary. It's needful for the proper development of Nigeria and Nigerians. Comrade Amakiri, uh, you are the national chairman of the YPP. Yes. Your party has just produced uh, Kingsley Moalu as his presidential candidate. How transparent was the process that uh, led to that? It was in the eyes of all Nigerians. And of course, um, I would say um, it's not good to praise yourself, but uh, I think we have received a lot of accolades from uh, across the nation. The only party that, uh, of course, this year conducted their first presidential primaries, and it was conducted 
in a very platter of peace, cohesion. Everybody was there. The delegates were there across the 36 states of this country. And um, uh, unanimously, somebody stepped down for Kingsley Mogalu because he was convinced that Kingsley Mogalu is a very competent person that can drive the aspirations of the party. What's your take and, um, on this? Not only that, even after the decision was taken, uh, remember it was on a convention that we held that. You know, that What's your take on direct and, we and indirect? We also sorry, went sorry we that. don't have enough time. What's your take on the direct and indirect primaries? A lot of people have made the argument that direct primaries um, enforces democracy within political parties. Mm -hmm. You get members, mean, for our viewers who don't know what direct primaries are, the, all members of the political party can vote in who they want the candidate to be for that position um, in place. So what's your take on that? Because the APC has adopted that, both direct and indirect. I believe the presidential mm -hmm. is direct then the governors can decide if they want to do direct or indirect for in their states. states. But what's your take from a YPP's perspective? You look, you, you just need to set a standard. When you are uh, unstable, you, you, today you talk about the direct, tomorrow you talk about indirect. What justifies your moral you know, uh, uh, outlook there to the people? Direct primary to me, I think, is the best form of election that every political party should adopt because you are giving power to the people, if you are talking about power to the people, okay? So, and that's what the YPP stand for. Even on that day, after the unanimous decision, you know, taken by party, you know, stakeholders, members, we still went further to conduct our direct primaries, where all party members queue behind their candidate of choice and they elected a presidential candidate. So and that is not just only- in the All Progressive Congress? Why can't we pick one form of voting? Why can't it be direct from presidential? Our constitution all allow, the way? allows what we are doing. In our constitution, in APC constitution, we have direct and we have indirect uh, 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 primaries. I give you a practical example in my state. I mean, we need to be very practical in what we do, particularly as far as parties are concerned and political parties are concerned. In APC, the ruling party, the party I belong, the party I believe, in my state, Abia state, we do not have a governor. So we don't have any controlling person. And what we opted in Abia state, we had a caucus meeting just two days back, is direct primaries. Now, I, I believe that uh, when NWC met, they agreed that because the governors, you see, the party, let us be honest, Nigeria belong to, which is not really so. There are some certain persons that believe it should be this way. And if you believe in proper democratic methodology. You have to allow certain persons, you have to allow certain methods to prevail. And that is what is happening. The governors prefer indirect primaries. And instead of causing confusion, instead of creating unnecessary problem in the party, you allow some of them that believe in direct primaries, if they have it agreed in their state, they do go by direct primary or they go by indirect primary. And let me say this, the issue is very, very simple. I believe in direct primary. If I have my way, I will cease on direct primary. But if the, some governors say they prefer indirect primary, you allow them to have indirect primary. For me, direct primary is far, far cheaper. And like you said earlier, it gives everybody, every party member, opportunity, A to Z, and even takes the popularity of the party in the state. Senator Kuro, do you believe this can help in strengthening the internal democracy in the People's Democratic Party, given the fact that we've started to hear about some squabbles within? Um, the PDP convention, for instance, is a bone of contention. Um, some members of your party have asked for it to be held in Abuja. <coughs> some members have insisted that it might be held in Potakot. Due to this, do you believe that this direct or indirect primaries can influence or strengthen the internal democracy of of the People's Democratic Party? Uh, it has always strengthened it. That has been our tradition. That is what the Constitution provides for. Uh, we have all along been using that system and it has been working for us. Direct primary. Uh, indirect. Indirect. We are into mm -hmm. indirect. Yeah. Um, the issue of venue has nothing to do with, the, uh, with whether it is internal or, or external or whatever. The issue of venue has to do with convenience. If, for instance, of course, there are only three cities that uh, can take the number of delegates as far as venue for it, as far as hotel accommodations are concerned. And these are Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Abuja. So it's not a bone of contention. It is just 
uh, an issue of convenience. If approval is given, because it, it, it has nothing to do with anything other than convenience, just like I have said. I'm not the spokesperson of the party, but going by what has been happening, because we have been attending a lot of meetings, it just has to do with convenience. Like, let me give you an example. If, for instance, there is going to be uh, like a clash in terms of the days of the con convention where, uh, amongst PDP and another party, something like that, certainly we have to have a plan B. Mm. If not, there will be a problem. Because the, which means the, 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 uh, where it is going to take place, like Abuja, for instance, if there is going to be another convention around that time, the party is considering issue of accommodation, issue of uh, a lot of other conveniences. Some aspirants are highly opposed to the convention holding in Posakot. They claim that the influence of the sitting governor, Ian Tamwike, might uh, foster some democratic issues internally. So does the David Mark campaign also share these fears? Not at all, because I was at a meeting uh, just about two days ago, and the issue of influence for, from anybody didn't come up as a reason. The reasons I have given earlier on about convenience of accommodation and space is just it. Uh, Senator Kure, the PDP mm. currently parades uh, a lot of political heavyweights who won mm. the presidential ticket, from mm. Saraki to Kwankwaso to Tamboa to David Mack, your candidate. And, yeah, exactly uh, so. Is the PDP on the path to implosion again after these primaries? And secondly, will you accept the result of the primaries if your candidate does not emerge? Certainly, yes. And this is uh, a covenant that all of them have agreed up, upon. The emergence of almost about 13 of them, who, if you look at the individual capacities, are fit for the job, shows that, of course, there is serious uh, deepening of democracy in PDP. Earlier on, if you look back into history, the numbers had never gotten this much. But it is because of the belief in the ideals of PDP. It is because everyone has been given the opportunity to come out and test your popularity. No, nobody is cramping on anybody, nobody is clamping on anybody. It, 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 it is just the party to beat when it comes to giving opportunities to each and everybody. But we hear that it's mm. typically the man or the woman who, have, who has the most money that typically wins these delegate um, elections. Uh, whoever can bribe the delegates with the most money typically picks up that ticket. Um, what's going to make it different in this case? Given the fact that you have over a dozen people vying for this one position, wouldn't it be more democratic if you had all party members of the People's Democratic Party decide who would emerge as the people's candidate for the presidential elections? Okay, that view uh, could be shared with the party. I mean, the, uh, the party as in um, NWC. I'm not the spokesperson. But what I know is that uh, over the years, what we have experienced in our primary elections, just like you are insinuating now, a lot of people say money change hands is the highest, uh, the person that pays highest is the one that gets the ticket. But uh, Nigerians are all wise now. Nigerians are much more intelligent than they used to be before <coughs> now. And there are those, I think majority of them will want to say, if there is any one of them that wants to show money, and not capacity, they will take the money and they will still go for the person with capacity. Mm. You understand? So if there are aspirants there that think that, yes, uh, it's money that is going to buy it for them and not capacity, honestly, they are getting it all wrong now because Nigerians are all wiser than mm. they used to be. Reverend Sally, what's yes. your thought? Do you believe that out of the, a dozen people who are vying for this position... None of is qualified. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she will say because Nigeria. it's not her party. She only knows uh, how they can only sponsor. In, in APC, they only believe that it's only one single person that can be a president. No, no, no. It, it's not they that don't have not, qualified people. No, that there is not true. That to is vie for it, that position. It's like, that, I'm that being, it's like I'm being bulldozed here. Yeah. It's only <laughs> the females, the PDPs. No, no, no. no. We, we, we believe in the young, the, the young generation. No, we believe in the young so generation. I think that that's not that about talk, it. I don't think. I don't think that uh, we have a lot of well-qualified 
personalities in APC. The in simple, APC. In, yes, in APC. But give them okay. the opportunity now to the come out. The opportunity was there for everybody. You know, you just said you don't you think that you have <laughs> well-qualified personalities in APC. No, 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 I say in PDP. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. I, I said, no, I said, and I said that. Can we we that? have a lot of, you said, <laughs> given the number that came it's out okay. for, for PDP. Mm -hmm. And I said because they, don't, they are not qualified. We have no, very no. qualified persons in PDP. In any, <laughs> sorry, in APC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for doing your job for me. Out of the abundance of the house. No, 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 <laughs> but the issue, the issue is that we believe in the leadership, and I keep on saying it. I, as a person, and for millions of persons I know, in Nigeria, we have over 50 million registered members of APC. Over 50 million. From Kekena Pep to the... the, 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 the over 50 million, yes. Oh, Nigeria. Nigeria. You, you want to challenge that? That APC members? Oh, you might not think so. Well, you're not thinking so, but that's what I'm telling you. But the records are there. Kekena Pep alone, we have about 11,000 members. Give me that we are calling. That we must be very careful. That are registered. Because with this kind of figure, we begin to wonder where are the 50 million population of the APC. In fact, how in totality, many, how many persons persons are in totality how, many how many persons are registered in Nigeria? In, anyway, in, in the maybe there could be... In the southeast alone, we are about 8 million persons uh, in the southeast. Yeah, in the unrealistic. past, it was not so. In the southeast it's alone. Unrealistic. And that much I can tell mm. you. But what I'm saying, coming back to what your question, we are 100% convinced. And the youth of Nigeria, the less privileged of Nigeria, have seen the handwriting on the wall. That in the past, it's all about money bag, money bag, money bag politics. But this time around, not even money bag politics, it's all about how much you can get from the government of the day, how much you can take home, how much you can build your castles here and there. But this government clamped down on such uh, on such unrealistic Comrade, life living. Comrade Macri, do you believe that this 2019 elections, we're going to see a different sort of uh, participation in the electoral process from the masses in the sense that it's not going to be all about money this time? Sure. We're actually going to see Nigerians come out and vote not only their conscience, vote a man or woman that they believe is capable in, to lead Nigeria forward. You, you could even see the wind that is blowing already. If you can have how, uh, 91 political parties, what's prompted that is because people are aggrieved. People are so aggrieved that they want to participate, you know, in political, you know, in the political process, process. of this country. Some people like us, I've never been a Kalkari member of any political party until I started with the YDP then and then later, you know, went, you know, back to, to, to also form the YPP with some other co founders of the party, you know. And um, <coughs> the truth of the matter is that there is um, a microscopic aristocratic structure, you know, in this country, political aristocratic structure that is going on now, that actually need to be disrupted if this country will go, you know, will move ahead. And that is why today there are innovative, competent, energetic young men and women that are ready, are ready to disrupt that status quo. And I can assure you that you will see a different ball game altogether come 2019. Comrade, and the YPP will serve to be that different. Comrade Macri, uh, Reverend Sally, Senator Kure, thank you so much for your time. We'll take a short break right now and we'll return more on the political segment of the weekend show. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the political segment of the weekend show. Joining us right now are Mr. Timmy Olagunju, who is running for the House of Reps in Ibadan North. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we also have Abubakar Siddiq, who is the founder of abusiddiq.com, and he's a member of the All Progressive Congress. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're talking today about the internal democracy within political parties. Um, you both are fairly young gentlemen, and you've both vied for one position, uh, political position or the other. So, Timmy, now that you're running for the House of Reps, how, was, how has your experience been so far? Uh, well, uh, it's quite eye-opening in the context of trying to properly understand the way the Nigerian people interact with the political space. And um, from that experience, I take time to document it. And some of my pointers, I'll just mention two or three. <coughs> Firstly, is that um, beyond the politics it, itself, there is need for massive civic education 
of the Nigerian people, particularly from the primary school level. And that's one of the key things that I'm very passionate about. Before the survival and the issues of life take over you know, beings, it's important that we invest massively in civic education because that determines the quality of the people in context. The second thing is that political parties, rightly, politics is a game of numbers, but political parties are emphasize the part of quantity rather than quality. And if you look at the political recruitment process of political parties, you see that that emphasis of quantity rather than quality produces the kind of members who do not care about the well-being in terms of the people, but what comes to them first. And then the third thing is that we need serious restructuring, not just constitutional restructuring. We need educational restructuring and we need political restructuring in context of how people interact with their parties. For example, you're a good person, you go into a particular party, you get elected. The party members feel that they own you. Mm. And so they demand constantly from you to the level that you have to find sustainable ways, in quotes, of meeting those needs, and then you forget your primary need, which is salus populi suprema lex, that is, the welfare of the people, not just party members, being the supreme law of the land. Abubakar, you lost out on your aspiration to become the National Publici Publicity Secretary of the um, All Progressive Congress in the last convention. Uh, what led to this? Um, I think majorly is um, as a result of the fact that um, the positions were microzoned. Um, although in the books, it was supposed to be zoned to the North Central. But um, because of the system that we have, um, it was further microzoned to um, Kwara State. And then considering the fact that um, we have a system already where certain individuals decide you know, how certain things should be done, everybody tend to um, aggravated their, I mean, their support and vote towards that, uh, that state, that particular state where the position was zoned to. Um, I ran for, the, for that position um, particularly because of the fact that I believe I have the capacity. And secondly, because I also wanted to challenge that, um, that system, that entrenched system. Because um, the position, all the positions in the party were zoned um, to, to the cis geopolitical zones. And um, I see that as, um, um, at, as a beginning, I see that as limiting the quality of people that you should have um, coming into the party and, I mean, taking leadership positions in the party. Because when you zone certain positions to certain zones, it means certain other zones who may have people that are qualified to take on positions that have not been zoned to that zone have been excluded. Mm. And then when, when the positions were zoned to you know, the, 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 the various geopolitical zones, the position that I ran for was zoned to my zone. But um, by, by what we had before the, the, the last one, the, the election, the person who, the position was zoned to Kwara. The person who was occupying that position was Kwara. But I am from Kogi and I said, for the fact that we have already lost the chance of getting good people from other zones by um, having the position zones to the political zones, we should not also restrict it to Quara and, I mean, just sit down and wait for anybody to emerge from Quara where there are possibilities of people from the states in the North Central that may even be better than somebody coming from Quara. Yeah, the issue of, of zoning has always been one that uh, I personally believe hinders internal democracy. But I'm actually surprised to hear that there is micro-micro zoning. Because usually when you zone, you say it's either going to the north or the south. But now we're here and it's not only your position, like the position you were buying for, wasn't only micro-zoned to the north central. It was micro-micro zoned <laughs> to one particular state. So are you also agreeing that the internal democracy within the APC needs to be worked on? Yeah, it, it needs to be worked on. Although I understand, um, I understand the purpose of the zoning. Um, we, ha we have um, the, the positions in the party 
are not enough to go across all the 36 states. And then when you don't zone, when you don't zone at all, there is a possibility that maybe half, half, of the, half of the leadership will come from a particular state or a particular region. So I see the sense in zoning, at least to the point of the geopolitical zones. But to further zone it to respective states, that is the part that I... But you just made I'm an argument that zoning hinders us from bringing out, bringing out, as Timmy said, quality people rather than quantity. Churning out quality people through the system rather than just representations of setting states and geo zones. So it seems that you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. I'm only trying to, I'm only trying to explain the fact that if you don't zone at all, because if you, if you, if you look at the constitution, um, the, the party ha also, also have to um, comply with the provision of the constitution, which says that um, the, the leadership must be, must be distributed. Now, if you don't zone at all, you have that chance of having people coming from a particular region or state. So that's the sense in the zoning geopolitically, so that at least you can have a spread in, uh, across the states. Okay, Timmy, um, yes. how realistic is the Not Too Young to Run campaign? You know, the campaign seeks to open the space for a lot of young people to participate in politics. But also, we've seen that the internal democratic challenges within the parties mm. themselves do not encourage the possibility of young people even imagine. We saw the case of Adamu Garba, mm. who could not even purchase his <laughs> nomination form in APC. Yes. So some have also said that the Not Too Young to Run campaign should probably have put the horse before the cart and not the cart before the <laughs> horse. Maybe start at the level of the political parties to get parties to embrace internal reforms first mm. before saying, oh, young people can run. Because yes, now young people can run. Yes. But uh, not also, not too poor to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your take on not this? Not too poor to run. Uh, well, first, firstly, is the fact that uh, to address the point, I want to come back to the issue of geopolitical zone in context of that. Pol geopolitical zone, frankly, is an aberration. We should be thinking of geoeconomic zone. As long as we have the word political there, everything we discuss will be political. Where has politics taken us to? It should be geoeconomic zones. Now, back to the not too young to run uh, campaign. I personally think, I, I do agree with your point of view, which is really in context with the reality. But sometimes you might not see the end of the tunnel from the beginning. Well, that's where we need strategic thinking. However, one thing that the Not Too Young to Run has done is that it has enriched the conversation about the need for young people to be in the place of governance in context of running for political office. That itself is a win. But is that a win-win considering the reality on, on ground? And, and so we need to take the conversation further away from just the not too young to run into looking at exercising not just the conveners of the not too young to run, but young people themselves who are running, coming together to address key issues, key issues like the cost of nomination form. Yeah, Abu Bakr Siddiq, on the cost of nomination, were you disappointed that um, Adamu Garba, a young aspirant in the APC, your party, was unable to even part participate? Yeah, I am disappointed that he's unable to participate. But um, like you rightly said, um, the Not Too Young to Run focused more on participation and not the process, not making it easier for people to be able to run. Politics in this country is very expensive. I wish we could delve in more into this <laughs> issue, but unfortunately we've ran out of time. We would love to have the both of you back again on the program sometime in the near future. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for Thank joining you. us. Thank you for having us. Let's take a short break right now. When we return, we'll bring you the ent entertainment. I was about to say <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> entertainment section of session of the South Show. <laughs> The weekend show. <laughs> the weekend show with Ina Peters. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>